So what I'd like to do now is look into this issue in a little bit more detail. So if we think about a piece of software as a mathematical object, and of course that's very natural for something like a square root function, but we can do this for any piece of software. If we think of a piece of software as a mathematical object, what we'll find is the software has a domain of values. And the domain of values is just a set of possible values that constitutes the set of inputs that the software is designed to handle. Now correspondingly, every piece of software also has a range. This is the set of possible outputs for the software. And so let's look at what the domain and range are for the square root function. So earlier we said that we probably would like to return the positive answer for a square root. And we also said that we're going to probably not going to be able to compute the um, square root of a negative number. And we can account for both of those facts in the square root's domain and range by making it a function from non-negative real valued numbers to non-negative real valued numbers. Alternatively, if we're implementing some sort of mathematical software, we might want to define square root for all real valued numbers, in which case the domain is the full set of real numbers and then the range is, is the set of complex numbers. Now actual computer code is not going to be able to deal with a full set of real numbers. Most real valued numbers are not representable on a computer at all. So instead of dealing with the reals, we're going to worry about floating point numbers. So for example, we might want to make square root a function from non-negative floating point numbers to the set of non-negative floating point numbers. But this isn't really very convenient. What, what, what should we do if somebody calls square root with a negative number? So what languages like Python often do is declare square root over the full range of floating point numbers and give outputs that are the, f the positive ranged floating point numbers unioned with a different behavior, which is to throw an exception. And so this bottom domain and range for floating point is the situation we actually get in many real programming languages. So now given this specification, let's get back to software testing and ask the question, should we test this square root function with negative inputs. So now let's bring the discussion back to testing and take a little quiz. So the question is, given this specification here where square root maps the full set of floating point numbers onto either a floating point number or a math exception, should we test this code with negative inputs? And the answers are either yes we should test it with negative inputs or no we should not. So take a minute now to mark down your answer.